Good afternoon and welcome to the uh, IBA Dissymmetry webinar on MyQA patients. Um, we're going to be speaking a little about uh, the new MyQA patient software and efficiency in planar dose QA for your IMRT QA as well as for VMAT plans. What is MyQA patients? Well, the simple answer is that uh, MyQA patients takes all the good things about the old IMRT software and actually optimizes the software for a more efficient workflow that's designed to increase efficiency and reduce the time it takes you to do each uh, planar dose QA. You're able to get uh, instant access to all your different patients by having a database with all the patients in them instead of having to worry about saving files in different places and then changing computers and having to move files around. None of this is a concern with MyQA because everything is saved in a, a simple database. And really to optimize the workflow so you can quickly click and drag and, and do calculations and things like that, which I'm going to show you in a second with the software. So when I when I go into MyQA, I have what's called the um, welcome page, uh, which is the start page inside of the software. I log in, it tells me my name, and then I can uh, see all the things I mentioned before, a latest news feed telling me what's the latest release of MyQA. Uh, I can look at uh, news from any kind of shows, um, any kind of a training events that might be coming up. I can keep track of those inside the training tab. Uh, I can have access to the support portal as well as to the, my, uh, the uh, care program. So inside of my QA patients, what I have here is the patient column as well as the project column. And inside of the patient column, I have a list of all the different patients which I'm treating right now and I need to do pre-planned -pre QA on. Um, I also have projects. The reasons that uh, projects are associated with patients is that maybe I have a patient um, who has, uh, is getting treated for a second time, or maybe there's some kind of uh, different boost plan I'm working on. Then what I can actually do is create different projects for the same patient associated with the name. So um, what I can do to quickly create a patient is I can uh, import a DICOM, or I can actually just click New Patient. So if I was to click new patient, I would go ahead and say new patient, give the patient some kind of uh, ID number. Uh, I can give it uh, Smith John. I can give it uh, date of birth. So we can say April uh, 18th, 1952. And uh, then I can go ahead and assign uh, gender, I can say okay, I have the patient here. And what I can do is then create a patient from the selected project. So I have my new patient right here. I can go to edit. I can actually say what kind of patient uh, it is. So uh, I know it might be a, uh, let's see, a head and neck. I can say what kind of detector I'm using, a matrix or a matrix flattening filter free device. Um, I then can uh, assign a location. So I can say it's at satellite one, the new site. I can give a due date on when this action needs to be completed by. Uh, so I say uh, December 10th. I have a little bit of time. And this is the workflow status, which will be reflected in several different uh, windows of the software to kind of give you an idea of where you stand. So it's an easy way to help manage uh, your different patient loads. So right now I haven't done anything. I'm not going to click on anything. Say OK. Uh, now what I can actually do is uh, open up the project. I can do this by double clicking or clicking to open it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the project. And then I have a nice little window showing import, measurement, and result. Uh, what I can do now is import a DICOM. I can import um, you know, generic um, OPG files, which are basically ASCII files, um, DICOM, Monaco, uh, Pinnacle Fluence, uh, all those other different files. The easiest way is to import DICOM. So when I import DICOM, what I can actually look at is a file-based import query if I actually want to have a, maybe some kind of DICOM directory that I then go to and uh, look for the patient name, uh, then I can actually go to patient name, type all this in. It'll go out and search uh, where this is actually located and then uh, bring up the patient information. If I have a DICOM listener and I set it up, I can also um, push the DICOM files outside of my TPS and then automatically bring them inside of here. It'll be listening. I also, if I set up a DICOM directory in my network somewhere, I can go there. For this example, we're just going to go to file. So I go ahead and uh, choose my folder. And uh, I said it was a head and neck, so I just click on this uh, right here, this directory. It looks at uh, the patient, which is inside of here. I can uh, look in subdirectories as well if it might be buried in there. Uh, so I can click OK. It's going to load all the instances. I see my, I have my DICOM dose right here, patient. I click OK. 
It's going to import all the DICOM folders and automatically create this directory. And then I have an entire uh, DICOM dose. So whether you export the dose uh, just at ISO Center, you export you know a single plane, or you uh, export the entire uh, volume, which is something that uh, our Proton uh, users actually like to do. You know, if you're measuring in three planes, you can actually get all the three planes right here. But uh, for regular uh, conventional radiotherapy, you know, I can find which plane I want and click and drag those planes in the proper uh, proper uh, planes. Go to the measurement tab here and uh, click on my detector connect to the detector, and then I can go ahead and, and take a measurement. Now we have several different modes which you can take a measurement in, single shot, movie mode, and beam triggered. Uh, this is really neat. I like the beam trigger mode because I can go ahead in here and uh, edit the settings. I can say what the sampling time I want it to be, you know, very, very dense. I can look at uh, how many samples before it's measuring beam, uh, number of counts, number of pixels. Uh, so once I set that up, I can uh, go to settings, and then I can go ahead and say what uh, WINAC I'm on. I can select uh, my energy based on what I've set up on my WINAC. Uh, no wedge. I can say gantry angle for each field if I want to. Uh, field size. Uh, detector. I can say if maybe the detector is rotated 90 degrees and it's on its side maybe. Um, Build-up material. And calibration tab. Now, what I can do here is actually apply an output calibration, and it's very, very easy to do. I would click New Output Calibration. I would say what when I come on, what energy I have. I would say what the known dose is. So I'd say deliver 100 centigrade, or maybe we've already calculated it might be something like uh, you know 94 centigrade, depending on how much buildup we have. We're going to deliver 100 monitor units. Uh, it can apply any kind of temperature calibration to the detector. Uh, I can go ahead and actually uh, use my simulator here and deliver beam. So I'm going to go ahead and measure, and, you know, it's going to deliver so many uh, monitor units. And then once I know my Linux is done, I click Stop. And then I can actually give this a name, so 6MV Cal. I can give, uh, say, I deliver 100 monitor units. I already know what, how much centigrade. And I can uh, maybe put the comment uh, looking at what date I actually delivered this on. So this today's date. And I click uh, finish, and then it applies actually this calibration to my measurement when I actually take it. Uh, what I can actually do then, once I have the device, is I can uh, take a measurement. So just to simulate, you know, what a measurement will look like, have my beam trigger mode. I go ahead and start. It's going to take a measurement and show what's actually being delivered right here. Uh, once I click stop, I'll see uh, all the different frames which were um, delivered. And what I can actually do is copy all these frames if I want, and then uh, I can either export them. Or I can actually compute uh, an integral frame, which is really, really neat. Uh, so I have my integral frame. I have that here. And then I could pull this inside of here and look at my uh, profile. Um, you know, I didn't apply a real dose, but it would show, uh, you know, I have this right here with my dose. Uh, and then I can actually bring in my different planes. Um, so that's what the workflow would be when we're talking about measuring. Now, uh, looking at some real data uh, that was measured, I can uh, then actually go here and say, okay, I'm done. Uh, I have imported, I've measured. I've now given a status to my uh, plan. I can go and click save. I haven't done analysis though or verified yet, so these two are blank. And then when I go back to my patients, I look at the uh, plan and I can see that it was imported and measured. So this is a whole list of all the patients which I've imported. I can see the ones which have been verified, see the ones that need review, see the ones that uh, actually failed, and I can see the ones that are still in process. And then I can kind of track where I'm at for each one of these patients. Now, because I'm in a database, once I'm done with these patients, I can actually then save them inside and archive the patient, which is a very, very nice thing as well. So once I'm done you know, with these patients here, I can go ahead and then uh, archive. And it would actually archive it inside of the uh, archive position of the database so it's not taking up any you know, space in there. So we'll start with a uh, simple, uh, I think, seven-field IMRT plan. So I have uh, my patient, Mickey Mouse. I have went ahead and already imported the um, planar doses. I want to click on uh, Mickey Mouse. I'm going to open them up here. And I have uh, this nice little view, um, which is really, really easy to move around. It's similar to what you had before, but much more efficient. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look at my imported folder and see all my planar doses. Uh, so I can just grab one of these, and click and drag, and then go to my measurements, 
And if I forget what name, that it's nice, it says what the reference name is. Um, so I go ahead and click and drag this guy in here. Uh, what I then can do is just click on uh, gamma index or DTA. I can look and see I have uh, 3% three millimeter. I can uh, you know set my threshold to 10%, 5%, 20%, whatever I want. And then uh, just click. So it's real, really nice. I get a nice quick comparison. And I see what I have right here, uh, the verification results. So I look at my passing rate. I uh, look at my histogram. Uh, I actually can move this around and look at different dose points inside. Um, so one of the things that's, uh, you know, a lot of people like to look at really quick is uh, position. So if I want to look at a particular position, I could go to uh, so central access and get the dose of central access right here and look at the comparison between the two. You can also move this around and do that. I can look at uh, dose profiles if I want. And um, as I, you know, move along, I can look at different spots inside of the profile. If I wanted to blow this up, um, you know, I could actually just look a little closer and see what's uh, going on inside of here. I can click on point visualization, uh, visualization and look at the individual chambers where they were. Um, one of the things uh, which many people did before, uh, which you don't have to do anymore, is uh, go here and if I wanted to look at the um, sampling, I can uh, resample to a different uh, grid spacing. Uh, so it's, it's a standard 7.62 for the matrix, but if I wanted to rescale to some kind of factor, I could do that as well. Uh, go here, and uh, again, I can move around in each window and look at the dose, individual dose points. And I can kind of zoom into any kind of spot I want to be in as well, which is nice. So I looked at that. I can look at uh, isodose lines as well. Zoom in here and look for the um, uh, reference as well as the measured and see where we are right here. Um, I have isodose configuration up here, so I can go ahead and uh, you know select a new custom kind of isodose configuration, which is really, really easy to do. And then I can uh, pick which one I want applied by clicking here, so I can look at new or look at IBA test, just depending on uh, which ones I've already set up. Um, I also have DTA, so if I want to calculate a DTA, I can do that. Um, and all I have to do for each individual field to just change it is go back again and pick my LPO. I'll pick the same one, bring it down here. Again, do another quick gamma calc. Gives me our results immediately. Now, we have a couple different uh, other settings which you can kind of look at right here. We have a uh, calculate absolute difference. You can look at diff uh, calculate the difference, uh, the sum quotient, uh, DTA, and then gamma. And we have a couple different gammas which you can read about as well. We have global and local comparisons. And then we have a properties tab as well. So you can kind of look at the individual measurement properties uh, for right here. You can look at the spacing of the detector, origin, pixel count, and look at all those details as well. Uh, what I have here is a distance cursor. So I have uh, distance tools, angle tools. I can also uh, look at a region of interest as well if I want to. I like to actually use the cursor myself. Um, what we have here is synchronize, and basically what this does is it synchronizes the two so that uh, you know we're looking at the same thing. Uh, chart labels, you can turn that on and off if you don't want to see the uh, dose. Um, absolute, if there's obviously a, a calibration factor of five, we want to look at what the actual dose was. But I could look at a relative sync if want, if if not, and I could basically look at you know what percentage dose this would be instead. Uh, relative sync uh, for these are going to actually be the same ones. Relative not sync that can look at you know basically different individual um, relative measurements, looking at you know which percentage is the highest. So this one, the max dose might be you know 89% uh, here, it might be different there. So I go back to um, this. I can actually swap these around if maybe for some reason I messed up my planes. I put the measurement uh, in this plane right here, and I put the import in the bottom one. I can quickly swap them. And again, just to do another calculation, uh, it just takes a second. Uh, and uh, I can look at uh, thresholds as well for my histogram. Again, uh, look at different kinds of uh, histograms. Again, I go back to my home. Um, when I'm done actually with this, and I can show the isotopes there. When I'm done with this, uh, what I can actually do is say, okay, I've measured, I've verified, and uh, I can go ahead and approve, and I can say, you know, verified excellent gamma numbers, go ahead and approve the plan, say okay, and go ahead and uh, save it. 
if you close and it's not saved, it'll actually prompt you to save as well. So um, that's an IMRT plan. Let's open up a VMAT plan here. We'll get a prostate. Okay, so we have this here, and uh, we've already imported the DICOM plane. So uh, go ahead and uh, look for you know, which plane I want. I think that actually there was a little bit of an offset on one of these. Um, so go ahead and uh, drag in. We'll drag in zero and see if this is the right plane. And uh, this can actually show you a little something I wanted to show. Uh, measurement, and we'll bring in the uh, measurement plane. So go ahead and do a quick uh, gamma. Okay, so we get 89.8%. Uh, and um, let's just say that, you know, we think there was a little bit of uh, uncertainty when we actually set this up. Maybe it wasn't quite set up as accurately as it should be. We have right here is a move and rotate data. So what I can do is click here, and I can actually look at the, you know, the individual isodose lines and the profiles, and I can get a, an idea about, okay, maybe there's a slight rotation that needs to actually happen. Maybe it wasn't set up quite right. So I can actually um, move this. If you look very, very closely, I can kind of do a quick movement to show you how they move apart. Um, you know, move the profiles. But if you need to do a, a slight alignment, what I actually could do is move this in the X or Y, and it tells you actually how much you're moving up here or by what angle you're moving. You can also set an angle if you want to. And uh, so I can slightly, you know, move this guy up here and see if maybe I get a little better alignment. So say OK. And then uh, it takes that into consideration. You know, it tells me what my new passing rate is. And um, this would be a VMAT plan. Again, I have the same functionality as before. I can go ahead and move the cursor to any point and look at the dose. Um, and what I can actually do once, you know, if I'm satisfied with this or, you know, I want to actually send this to my um, chief physicist to have him look at something, I can go ahead and measure it, but I haven't verified approval. I'm going to go ahead and flag this, okay? Now, if I had passed it or, um, you know, I said, no, that's okay for what I want, what I can actually do is go here and then pr print a quick uh, verification report. So I click uh, default. And it's going to say, do you want to save? I'll say yes. And for each field, you can create a report. Uh, and then it pulls up a nice little port for me right here. I can go ahead and export this as a PDF. I'll just put it on my desktop so we can zoom in and say test report. Okay, so it's going to save it there. And then I have my test report. I can go ahead and open this up and look and see what I have here. So uh, just to zoom in, you know, I have the results right here gives me my uh, result. I can look at the um, dose at CACs. If I actually select the coordinates, so I could actually select, you know, zero, zero. I can look at my dose at CACs on the report, the differences, uh, look at my passing rate, uh, look at the uh, histogram, look at a, a result, a gamma, gamma index map, and have a nice, uh, you know, report here with the patient's name, ID, and I can go ahead and put this in ARIA or Mosaic or uh, whatever other OIS I might have. Um, so uh, really, these are kind of the main functionality um, things. Auto calculation basically will just auto automatically do the calculation instead of me, you know, having to say calculate each time, um, you know, when I make a change, which is nice. Um, and again, I have all my patients right here in a really easy, um, easy to look at menu that allows me to kind of get an idea of what patients I still have to do, which ones I might have to do later. Um, go ahead and move things around. One other nice feature of my QA is that, you know, when I'm doing these different things, I can actually change uh, the screen so I can give a little more of a bigger size if I want to look at uh, a window. So if I'm in verification here and uh, I, I want to get a better idea, I can actually blow all this up, move this around. Uh, it's, it's nice and it allows me, you know, depending on what I like to see, to have a little more of efficient workspace to work around with. The stopwatch as well, so I can look and see how long it takes me. Um, can uh, look at all the different menus here. So um, once I've done everything, basically, um, let's just say maybe I saw something strange in uh, one of my measurements, and I think uh, you might actually had seen that. I have a, a pixel up here that looks kind of strange might be a detector that's acting weird. So what I can do is actually go quickly into my fast track. This is the module that lets me look at my uh, 
my uh, profiles and look at flatness and symmetry, and I can have an idea about, hey, what's actually going on here? So it's very similar to what I had before. Uh, you know, I have a, a beam triggered mode, which I'll go ahead and use the same one. And um, let's see, I'll go ahead and click start. And then I have a profile here. I can look at everything and look at what's going on. Okay, and then uh, stop. And I have all my individual frames here. And then if I want to look at diagonals, I can look at, look at my individual detectors. So if I have a detector that might be acting weird, I might have a drop or I might have something strange, you know, in one of my profiles. I can actually just get a quick uh, look at it. I can go then to profiles and uh, say, you know, I want uh, center. And I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, TrueBeam protocol. Okay. And... Um, then uh, go look at each frame, and I can actually export the frames or save them in the database. Saving the database will allow me to then to look at the comparison later. So then I can look at uh, penumbra, flatness and symmetry, CAX. And what's nice is if I take several different measurements, um, then I can go inside the MyQA platform itself and then go to the data compare, data import, click on data imports, and then it's going to show me all the profiles I've been taking over time. Okay, so I actually have been taking these in agility, I think. So click on agility. It shows me all the different uh, profiles I've been taking. I can look at the these ones. I can filter down to my matrix detector. Okay, and then I can look at uh, maybe two different profiles. It'll show them here. So look at a cross line, another cross line. She choose these two, add and switch to comparison. Um, you know, it might be depending on what kind of test. I think this is a wedge constancy test, but it will give you an idea. I can then um, select them, set this one as a reference, and I can actually look at the differences between flatness and symmetry. Penumbra. So I can look at any kind of difference based on when the machine was performing. So I can track things over time. And again, if I see something strange, maybe in one of my measurements with, with um, uh, a patient plan, I can quickly just switch over to this uh, MyQA Fast Track, take a machine measurement, give me everything I need, and I can look at diagonals, cross line, inline, and you can take these off. Go ahead and save it and do a quick comparison over time. So it's a really, really nice tool when I'm moving back and forth. It's a very, very efficient workflow. So um, that's pretty much it with uh, MyQA patients.